What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp and Blender tutorial for you. So, if you remember a few weeks ago, I made a video, it's probably a couple months ago now, I made a video talking about how I've started a Blender channel as well, and how I really thought there were some possibilities for kind of working between SketchUp and using Blender for like your renderings or other things like that. So, I thought I'd make a video showing you how I would take a model from the 3D warehouse export it to Blender and then render it. So I will try to include some backup videos as well, talking about some of the principles, both from SketchUp as well as Blender in the links down below. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to find a model in the 3D warehouse to render. So let's just go to Window, 3D Warehouse, and let's find a model. So in my situation, let's go ahead and let's find, let's bring in one of these chairs right here. That should be a good one. So it's from a featured commercial model collection, the Banquetta, Ill House, Disco. I'll link to it in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and take this and download it into our model. And this is pretty big, um, but I think we can cut down the size. So let's go ahead and use it anyway. So we're going to go ahead and download that. I mean, we'll just click in order to place it. And in this situation, um, I don't know that we need all three of these. Um, these are nice because the materials actually look pretty good on them, so that'll be helpful. Let's go ahead and let's just take the black one. So we'll get rid of these guys. We'll go ahead and we'll move this over inside of our component box and we'll call this good to go. One thing I usually like to do when I do this is I like to go up to window model info and purge all of the unused stuff in here just to make sure there's no leftover junk inside of the model that's gonna slow everything down. I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my default model as well. So we're gonna export this to a Collada file. And if you remember, I have a video about exporting to Blender, which I will link to in the notes down below. It doesn't like it when this is in this first overall group. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm just gonna explode it, right? So then I have my individual parts and pieces in here. I'm actually going to explode this again, um, just so that this isn't all packaged together. Um, so these parts are now kind of their own individual pieces. Um, there may be a little bit of trial and error there. But what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I'm gonna move it close to my model origin. So just over here, just so it's not like way away from that. And then I'm just going to export this. So to export this, I'm just gonna do a file, export 3D model. And so in this situation, what we wanna do is we want to save this as a Collada file. So you wanna click the drop down right here, select the option for Collada file. And you can go in the options and there's some things you can change in here. At the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is and let's see what comes in. Make sure that you check the box for export texture maps. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this um, chair for render. We'll go ahead and export this to that Collada file. So once you've done that, we're ready to go into Blender. So I have version 2.83. You might have a slightly different version, but the steps are gonna be generally the same. And so what I wanna do is I wanna import this model into my file. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a file, import, and find the option for Collada. So we're gonna click right here. We'll go ahead and find our file, just click on it right here and click on the button for import Collada. Theoretically, this should bring this object in with all the geometry and the materials and everything else. So this preserved all of my geometry, it preserved my materials. So it actually came in really well, which is really good news because trying to clean that stuff up can get a little bit um, ugly. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out my default Blender model. What I've got now is I've got this chair in here. And so now what we want to do is we want to render that. And so we need to do a little bit of setup in order to do that. And we're not going to talk too much about setting up materials or anything like that for right now. Um, we're specifically going to focus on the render setup process. Um, if you want, I can make another video about setting up the materials. But for now, I'm going to start by going over into viewport shading rendered mode. So what that's going to do is that's going to give me a preview of what this is going to look like rendered. You can see how it doesn't look very good at all because there's nothing in here except my model. And so just like any other rendering program, we need to start by adding a light source. And so to add a light source, I'm just gonna do a Shift A. That's how you add objects inside of Blender. And then we just wanna click on the button for light and we wanna find an area light. 
So we can just click right here to find an area light. And now we need to start moving things around inside of Blender. And so in Blender, there's a lot of like keyboard shortcuts and other things like that that a lot of people use. Um, just to make it simple on my SketchUp users that are watching this, I'm just gonna say start by clicking on this move button right here after you've selected your light. So you click on your light, and then click on this button right here for move. That's gonna be the simplest way to move this around because it gives us this gizmo that's pretty universal. And so we can use this gizmo to start moving this light around, right? So I can click and drag on like the blue button right here, or the blue arrow or the red arrow to move this around. And what I wanna do is I wanna move this so that it's up above my chair and you can navigate around very similarly to SketchUp. So you can click and hold the center mouse button to orbit. And then you can scroll in order to move up and down or in and out. And so what I wanna do is I wanna take this light and I wanna click and drag this little yellow piece right here. So this is pointing at my chair. And so what a lot of people do in Blender is they go into your preset viewpoints. So in this situation, for example, if I want to go into the top down viewpoint, I would just click on this little Z right here. So what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to move this around and I can see exactly where it's located on the X and Y axis. And then if I click on the front view, I can use this to figure out exactly how high this light is, right? So now what I have is I have a single light in here pointing at my chair. And you can affect the brightness of your light by selecting your light, clicking on this button right here. You can see how you can adjust the power of your light over here. And so I'm gonna set this to be like 100 watts for right now. It's a little bright, maybe we'll bring it down to like 50 watts. And so one thing we wanna think about if, and I will link to a video down below about creating an actual lighting studio in Blender. But what I wanna do is I wanna create just a surface on the ground for right now. So I don't wanna get too in depth because I don't want this to be a how to model in Blender video. But what we can do is you can either do a shift A to add a mesh, or you can go to add mesh plane. And so all we want to do is we just want to take this plane and we just want to scale it up. So we just want to make it bigger. So the way that we can do that is we can click on the scale button right here, or we can tap the S key. If you click the scale button, then you can see how this gives you the ability to click and drag on these axes right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this so that I get a little bit of a shadow underneath my chair. So I'm just gonna scale this out. You could also just select it and tap the S key and move your mouse in order to scale it as well. So what we have now is we have a chair model with a single light. And so now what we need to do is we need to add a camera, right? Because right now we can't render our image because um, Blender doesn't know where our view is going to be shown from. So if we were to go up to render and click on render image, it's not actually gonna give us anything because we don't have a camera in here, right? So what we wanna do is we just want to add a new object. So either by clicking on add and clicking camera or doing a shift A and adding a camera. So what that does is that adds this little object right here, right? And what this object is, is it's a camera. You can see how it shows up in your scene collection over here. And so if we look at this, you can see how, and we can kind of move this around a little bit, that camera is going to affect where our view is rendered from. Okay, and so there's two things I wanna do here because this will act a little bit weird because what this did is this exported a camera view from your SketchUp model, which uh, doesn't give us a very good result. So we're gonna go up into our SketchUp model. So in our collection, you see where this model for SketchUp is? I'm gonna click the drop down, and I'm just gonna right click on this camera and I'm gonna delete it just because it causes some issues that we don't really want in here. And so now what we wanna do is there's a little trick in here now that we've deleted our SketchUp view um, for setting up our camera a little bit better. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on this camera and click on zero right here. And little side note, if you get like a blank 
screen right here if it's like gray try tapping the home key um, sometimes your view kind of pans and it gets a little bit weird I don't know if everyone else is gonna have that issue or not but what we want to do is we can tap the zero key on your numpad and that's going to basically make your camera view or your screen align with your camera view and one other thing you want to do is tap the in key on your keyboard and look for an option for view and click on the button for lock camera to view. So now what we've done is this has locked our camera so that whatever is shown on our screen like this is going to be where the camera is. So it's moving the camera around as we navigate on our screen. So then all you have to do is just kind of zoom in until you get kind of the look that you're going for right here. And we're just going to keep this fairly simple. So if you want to get out of that view, you can just tap the zero numpad key again, but notice how my camera actually moved along with that. So now what we have is we have a very simple scene in here with our chair and a single light and a plane. And I will link to a video down below about creating a studio, which is a little bit more in depth. But for now, let's go ahead and render this scene. And so we want to make a couple changes, right? So first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have the proper render engine set selected because Blender has two render engines contained inside of it. So we're going to click on this little camera button right here for render properties. And notice how this right now says that our render engine is called Eevee. So Eevee is a real-time rendering program or rendering engine. And what that means is that means that everything inside of your scene updates dynamically really quickly. And it can create really great images, but it also creates some things like these shadows flashing, which we don't want to get into right now. Instead, all we want to do is we just want to click the drop down and select the option for cycles. And so as soon as you select the option for cycles, this is going to reload as long as you have your rendered view set up. And this is going to render this more like a traditional render engine like V-Ray or something like that. And so if we look at this, we can see that now this is actually like sampling the light in here and you get a better shadow. Let's go ahead and let's render our image. So all you need to do at this point is just we have our camera set up, right? We have our lighting set up, so you just need to go up to render, render image. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna render out this image using the lighting inside of our scene. And so notice how some materials either didn't get brought over or didn't get set up. We can talk about that in a future video. So we might wanna apply a different material to the rest of this chair as well. And the geometry is a little bit goofy as well. But again, this is just kind of a starter video. So you can see how with very little work, we were able to create a decent rendered image inside of Blender from our SketchUp model. And so if you decide that you want to save that, you can go to image, save as, and you can save your image in whatever folder you want. So in this case, we could just call this chair render and click on the button for save as image. And that's gonna save your image in that folder. And now we can close out of this. Make sure you save this before you do that. But now we can close out of this. And so I don't wanna to get too far into the rest of this in this video, but you can go over into your output properties and adjust the size of the image that's created and some other things in here as well. So there are a lot of other things that we can adjust. We can also apply different materials or other things like that. But this should give you a basic idea of how to get these objects from SketchUp into Blender for rendering. So that's a very fast, very high level overview of how to get things from SketchUp to Blender for rendering. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're interested in more things in this series. We could do something a little bit more in depth if you wanted to. So if you're looking for more Blender tutorials, I will link to my Blender channel in the notes down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.